At the time of recording this, Webflow has a limit on the number of collection lists that you can have on a single page. Currently it's 20. And I ran into this a week or so ago at work and I had to figure out, all right, I've got this component with a sidebar of items on the right hand side and this kind of large featured item on the left. Is there any way where I can merge these and have them pull from the same collection list? Well, the short answer is yes, you can. And it's actually surprisingly easy. It just requires a little bit of custom code. So I want to go ahead and change this from a static element to pull from a collection list, do that together with you so that if you've run into this problem before, or maybe just want to use the strategy, you can. And then the other kind of nice thing is that there's a little bit of a smaller headache and that you, to, you don't have to worry about sorting as much because uh, like what you would do is like, this is the first item in your sort list. And then this is item number two. You don't have to worry about that because it's all pulling from the same list is going to sort appropriately. So that's really nice. All right, so let's hop into the Webflow Designer. And I think the first thing we can do is just a nice kind of cursory overview of how this is built so that it makes a little bit more sense when we start working with our collection. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but if you want to um, kind of do a deep dive of how this is built, I'll make sure that the read only link is available in the project description and you can kind of dig into your heart's content. Okay, so we've got a news grid and this is a CSS grid item and it's set to a two column layout with the first column being 1.75 fractional units and the one on the right being one. And that way the left column takes up more space and kind of gives the prominent position to the featured item. So kind of nice that that's built that way. Then we've got these three uh, small news list items and the featured one is set to take up a auto position of three row spans. And this is going to be really key. So make a mental note. <laughs> we'll come back to this um, later on. Uh, but the idea here is that um, if it was just set to one, for example, or, or I tried to make this even bigger, it would just be weird. Um, when I make it take up the three row spans, it's actually getting its height from the items on the right hand side. And it's always going to take up the height that they determine. So if I kind of add to it, you can see it's growing, uh, which is really nice. Okay, so that's basically how this is built. Now we can start bringing our static element <laughs> into a collection list. So I'm going to grab this section down here, duplicate it, and we'll call this or not call it, but uh, change it to recent news, add a collection list, and we're going to source it to our blogs like we have done in the last couple of tutorials. And you don't have to do this, but just so that um, this list matches the one up here, I'm going to limit this to four items. Okie dokie. Um, then I'm going to come into my static uh, component and I'm going to grab one of each type of item. So the small news item, go ahead and paste that in there. And then the feature news wrapper, I'll paste that in there as well. Then I'll grab the same class that we were using for our static element news grid and apply it to the collection list. Uh, let's also give the collection item a name. So we'll do the news grid item. All right. And, um, okay. So essentially we have both of the layout styles in our news grid item. And we want this small news list item to be kind of like the one that shows by default. So let's go ahead and set our feature news wrapper to uh, display none. Uh, and that broke our <laughs> layout up here. So I'm just going to add a quick display block uh, on here just so that we can continue to reference this. All right. And uh, okay. So let's talk about what we need to do next. So we got to do two things. One is we've got it to be able to target um, the feature news wrapper and turn it on or turn it to display block, but just for the first uh, instance of news grade item. And then we have to turn small news list item off or in other words, turn it to display off. Then we also have to make sure that news grade item is taking up three row spans, just like this one is over here. So we have got two things <laughs> to do here. All right. So, uh, to do that, we're going to use custom code. Uh, 
Now you actually do have access to uh, some nth child type things uh, currently in Webflow, which is uh, the CSS property that we're going to use to do all of this. Um, so if you click on a collection item and click on a drop down, you actually have access. These are these are nth child uh, pseudo selectors. I, be, I believe is what they're called. I might be wrong. Might be a pseudo class. I think it's a pseudo selector. Somebody correct me in the comments. <laughs> but anyways, we've got first item, last item, odd, and even. So those are all nth child um, things, pseudo selectors. And first item is the one that we're really going to be um, targeting. But we can only um, target the news grade item class. Uh, so we can't say, oh, first item, and then turn small news list item inside of it off. Still, still can't do that natively in Webflow. Uh, so we're going to add an embed. And let's add opening and closing style tags. And then we want to go ahead and grab our news grid item. Come into the class, or sorry, the embed. And in CSS, classes are denoted with a period. So add our period and then the class name. And just to kind of test this, we can say, um, OK, let's say the background is lime green. We're just making sure that we're targeting these. Ah, OK, so now we've got, we know that we're targeting the news grid item correctly. All right, and then we need to target the first item. So that is done with the colon first child. So that's essentially what Webflow is going to spit out if you use um, news grid item. If you click on first item, that's the exact same thing that Webflow is going to spit out when it shoots at the CSS. So now we're only targeting uh, the first item here. Um, and then what we want to do is uh, we want to make sure that it's taking up the three column spans, right? Or three row spans, excuse me. So I'm going to publish this. And really the easiest way to do this, and you can see I did it before the um, up here in the top. <laughs> you can see I was testing this before I recorded this. Um, but go ahead and publish it. And that's why I built this out statically first. Um, and then open it up. Right click on the uh, featured news item wrapper, uh, which is right here. And then you can see that this right here, this grid column end span, um, and grid row and span. This is all the custom code that we need to tell uh, the browser that the first item is going to take up three row spans. So let's go back into our embed. And instead of the background lime green, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and add that stuff here. Okay, so you can tell that we're halfway there because now the sidebar uh, list items are on the right hand side, just like they are over here. But we still need to turn on the featured card and turn off this list item. All right, so let's grab the small news list item class, go into our embed, and uh, maybe below we'll add that here. But again, we need to use nth child because if I just set this to display none, it's going to turn off every single instance of that class, which is definitely not what we want. What we want to do is target the small news list item only when it's inside of the first news grid item child. All right, so now uh, we still have our small news list items on the right hand side, um, but we don't have anything on the left, even though it is taking up three row spans. So now we got to kind of the opposite where, um, actually, let me grab um, this thing. I'm terrible at spelling, so it's always easier for me to copy and paste. <laughs> OK, so there we are. And uh, we're actually just basically doing the opposite. So we're grabbing the news grid item first child, and then inside of it, the feature news wrapper, and setting it to display block. All right, now nothing is actually going to happen because um, this is just kind of like a, uh, I don't know, eccentricity of using this method. But over with Feature News Wrapper, we got to make sure that the height is set to 100%. So I'm actually going to not select the display block one, but the original and set the height to 100%. 
All right, and now we've got our class, or I'm sorry, our feature news wrapper showing up. And all that is left to do is to sync all of this stuff to the CMS. Uh, so that is now synced. Sync this to the article title. This can be the publish date, um, published on. And then we've got to do the same thing with these ones, right? Because they're technically different items. Um, but it'll affect all of these down here. All right, so now we have a fully functioning um, two column layout with a featured card, <laughs> um, all within the same collection list. And we used nth child to tell the browser that we want this card to show up only when it's the first child and to turn off this card when it's the first child as well. Uh, maybe the last thing I'll mention is that um, something that you'll wanna do is wrap all of this in a, um, media query. Okay, so here's what I mean is if I go down to tablet, um, maybe not necessarily in tablet because we can just kind of make this a little bit smaller. Um, but maybe by the time we get to uh, mobile, we want this to start becoming a one column layout. So we need to go into a media query to do that. So we're going to type in CSS media rule. Uh, I constantly research this, so it's already pulling up. And we can just copy the very first thing here. And then we're going to go into our embed. And we're going to wrap all of this in a media query. So what this does is it's telling the browser only apply all of this code when it, met, when it meets <laughs> this criteria. And we want to say that the minimum width is the smallest um, uh, break point for tablet, which if I'm not mistaken is I think 769, I can't remember. Okay, so 767 is the largest landscape and I'm in tablet and 768 is there. So this is actually 768 is the minimum width. So what we're telling is the browser has to be at least 768 pixels wide or wider. And if that's the case, then implement this. So in other words, it's going to um, keep that uh, the um, custom code that we implement is going to stay on desktop and tablet, but it's not going to show up on mobile. Um, so now what we can do is grab our news grid and basically just delete that. And now we've got this nice um, one column layout in mobile. All right, so that does it for um, this week's video, but I wanted to give you a preview of what we're gonna be doing next week. We're looking at Patagonia's homepage. And if you look down here, they've got this really cool way of introducing full bleed content. So there's this white padding around this section. And as I scroll into view, that white padding kind of disappears and really lets you take in the glory of um, the full bleed moving GIF. I love that. And so we're gonna be recreating that inside of Webflow. So here's the preview. Uh, preview mode in the designer. And as I scroll into view with this section, the white padding kind of scales out and then I can move on to the next section. So if you're interested in watching this, make sure that you subscribe and that way you get notified when I release this video next week. All right, so that does it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one.